So from that we have Ben Sykes, our Operational Director, who's going to talk to you about uh, Dom Energy and give you an overview of what is coming up for us in the next few years. So I will hand over to you, Ben. Thank you very much, uh, Helen. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Dong Energy Stand. I'm just going to give a very short talk this afternoon just to give you a bit of an overview of Dong Energy uh, in the UK and uh, worldwide. And talk a bit about uh, our future plans in the UK, our pipeline projects that's uh, coming up over the next decade and beyond. So, to start with a bit of background, a bit of an introduction for those of you that don't know uh, Dong Energy beyond the offshore wind developer um, that's brought us here today. Um, we're actually uh, an energy company involved right across the energy value chain. We're very focused in Northwest Europe, uh, obviously started in Denmark, but now operating in a number of countries. We have a big exploration and production activity. In the UK, we're very focused in developing uh, new gas discoveries in the west of Shetlands, um, but we also have activities elsewhere in the North Sea and the Norwegian Sea. Thermal power is our history. Uh, in Denmark, we've been a power generator and uh, a supplier in uh, the domestic market for a long time. Uh, we also have a thermal power plant actually in the UK in Severn, uh, one of the world's most efficient CCGT plants. Wind power you know about, um, and hopefully you will in the next 10 minutes at least. Uh, energy markets, we trade all types of energy. In the UK we have uh, an energy trading team, particularly trading LNG, and sales and distribution. And in the UK we recently uh, acquired a uh, B2B gas sales business from Shell, it's called Dong Energy Sales, third biggest uh, supplier in the uh, business market in the UK, so around 11% of the market, quite a big piece of business there. So we're involved right across the value chain in the energy business in the UK as well as across the rest of Europe. In terms of size, uh, as you can see our revenue last year was around about uh, 6.5-7 billion pounds. Uh, with an EBITDA of just over 2 billion euros, so a significant piece of business around Europe. In terms of our vision for the future, uh, we, as I said, have got a history of uh, working in the thermal power business, generating electricity for the Danish domestic market, predominantly using coal. Uh, and so we have been looking at uh, a vision of moving from uh, a very much a coal-based uh, generation mix to, uh, a 50, to, to a much greener mix in 2020. And by 2040, we're aiming to supply our energy with just 15% of the emissions per unit of energy that we see today. So it's a very ambitious target over, as you can see, 34 years to move from where we are today to a much, much cleaner energy mix as an energy supplier in the Danish and other markets. So the move from black to green is, is a core, if you like, value as well as a strategic intent for Dong Energy and very much drives the nature of our business across Northwest Europe. We recognise though that that has to be achieved through uh, a managed transition and that security of supply is a very important aspect of uh, the energy market. And as a result, we're not just focusing on wind, but we're looking at repowering some of our um, coal-fired thermal stations using biomass, and very much focusing on gas as a transition fuel, very important part of the energy mix going forward. So we are on, on a transition journey from black to green. Offshore wind is a very important part of that. Quick view of what we are in the UK in terms of the scale of our business. You'll see from the pie chart at the bottom, we have committed or already invested over four billion pounds in the UK market since we arrived here in uh, early 2000s. The vast majority of that, over three billion, has been in offshore wind. And we will see very large investments coming into our EMP business uh, as we develop some of the gas fields west of Shetlands. Uh, but wind will continue to be, and offshore wind specifically, will continue to be the core business um, for Dong Energy in the UK. We have around 300 people uh, across all our businesses in the UK. We're spread quite widely um, across London. Uh, we've got offices in Wales and up in the northeast of England, as well as all of our operating bases. And we also have an office in Aberdeen in our EMP business. 
In terms of our history, um, we're known as a, an offshore wind developer today, but we've been at it for quite a while actually. Um, we started with, I think it's called Vindbu. Um, my Danish isn't great yet. Vinabu, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, it wasn't the world, well, it actually was probably one of the world's largest offshore wind farms at the time, uh, with 450 kilowatt turbines, which uh, might sound rather pathetic today, but were state of the art as big as it gets at the time. Um, and as you can see from the, uh, from the chart, over the years we've moved through Middle Grundon, Hornsreath 1, to what we see today, which is the world's largest offshore wind farm, Walney, uh, 102 uh, turbines, Siemens 3.6 megawatt machines, um, and that is fully commissioned as of this week. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but you can see the rapid uh, growth in the capacity that we are uh, involved in around Europe. In terms of our market position in offshore wind, we are uh, very much at the forefront. You can see we have just under 800 megawatts uh, of offshore wind in operation with another gigawatt or so in construction. Uh, this just gives you an idea of how that compares to other players in the offshore wind market. Not to say, not to say that Biggest is necessarily best, although obviously in this case it is, um, but what, what it really shows you is that we're very committed to the offshore wind business. We see it as an important part of the energy mix in Northwest Europe and uh, we are very committed to continuing on that journey. Something that Dong has been pioneering over the recent years is bringing in different types of investor and partner into the business. Um, some of you will have been following this story, some of you may not. This just shows the various uh, partnerships that we have around our Northwest European portfolio of offshore wind farms. And what's of note is that we have a large number of financial or institutional investors alongside our industry partners such as Centrica, SSE and Scottish Power and Vidrola. You can see, for example, in Newstead and Anholt we have uh, a Danish pension fund investing in our wind farms. At Walney we have, as well as SSE, we have two Dutch institutional investors. One is an equity fund and one is a pension fund. And what's really important is that if you take Anholt as an example, we've actually brought invest investors into this wind farm, institutional investors pre-construction. And we think this is a really important signal in the market that we are a maturing industry where investment can come in. They don't need to wait until the construction risk is behind us. We have uh, innovative ways of partnering with institutional investors that enables us to bring a lot more capital and we hope the whole industry will be able to do this, bring more capital into the industry and enable the UK and the rest of Europe to achieve its ambition in terms of the scale of investment of in offshore wind that we know we need if we're going to achieve the targets that uh, we in the UK and others around Europe have set. So it's a major milestone and, and Walney in particular, the world's largest wind farm, bringing in investors before construction risks of all, are all behind us is a very big step forward for us. You can see we've also brought investors such as Marabeni into Gunfleet Sands as well, so a very broad base of institutional investors in our portfolio. Looking to the future, this is our pipeline of projects in the UK. Quite significant um, by any measure. Now, there's been a lot of talk at this conference about the imperative of cost reduction. And one of the ways that we're going to achieve the kind of cost reduction that the industry needs to achieve to be competitive uh, with other forms of power generation is to start developing through pipelines, not just project and then another project and then another project, but actually approaching this as a pipeline of activity where we can move from one to another and, and get down that cost curve so much more quickly. Uh, so you can see we have a pretty uh, robust pipeline. What you see today, I'm sure by five o'clock tonight will look different and in a week and a month will look different in terms of where things sit in that pipeline. That's an inevitable consequence of the nature of our business. But the important thing here is that we're able to start planning on the basis of a whole portfolio of developments, a whole pipeline of activity. Um, I liken this a little bit to what uh, Henry Ford did with the manufacturing of a car 
going from just building a car and then off it goes and we'll build another one to let's have this kind of production line approach where we can uh, get people really expert in the bits of the activity that they do so that we can drive the cost down. And we certainly believe in Dong Energy that achieving that £100 a megawatt hour for projects uh, at FID in 2020 is absolutely achievable if the industry continues to scale up and we can follow through on this kind of approach. Just to finish with, um, I have to blow the trumpet a little bit. Walney, uh, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, fully commissioned earlier this week. The last turbine went through its uh, commissioning tests and passed the flying colours. And we now have all 102 turbines operating uh, off Barrow. And uh, yeah, it's great to have the world's largest wind farm. Um, we're looking forward to beating this with the London Array in, in the next several months. But for the time being, um, it's, uh, it's well worth a visit if you happen to be in the area. It's uh, quite a striking sight and yeah, producing a lot of electricity. So I think this is a good sign of the future. It was built in record time. It was built with institutional investors' money as well as our own. It's all the things that we need to start seeing in the industry if we're going to capture the scale that we need in order to be cost competitive and to build the industry that, that I think we all know uh, we want to build. So that's all I was going to say. I hope uh, that was of some interest in terms of seeing what Dong is up to. Please do hang around, have a beer, have a chat to some of the uh, Dong Energy staff who are here today. You can recognise us from our delightful spotty ties and scarves. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.